hours after Republicans in the Iowa legislature passed new abortion restrictions, Planned Parenthood and the ACLU of Iowa filed a lawsuit to block those restrictions from taking effect. Here are the three things to know. The bill would ban abortions in Iowa once cardiac activity is detected. Now, it includes exemptions for medical emergencies, rape or incest. The bill is nearly identical to the 2018 law, which ended up blocked in the courts. Now, following yesterday's special session, there are many questions of how we got here and what happens next. So today, Local 5 sat down with constitutional law expert Sally Frank, who has been vocal about her opposition to this bill. We also got some clarification on some answers regarding the complicated legal process. Given the full legal landscape and the fact that the last upheld Iowa Supreme Court ruling used an undue burden test, I think the safest thing for a district court judge to do is say, it appears that undue burden is the test until the Iowa Supreme Court says it isn't. While Frank says this could end up in the district courts, Governor Reynolds and lawmakers still have the opportunity to bring it to the Supreme Court if they file an appeal. Tonight at 10, Local 5's Dana Searles will continue the conversation as we dig into the next steps and what the timeline for this bill could look like. And when legislators are called into a special session, they are paid for their time. It's one of the reasons a special session is so rare. It costs taxpayers to reconvene both the House and the Senate. Now, Local 5 is working to find out exactly what this session cost Iowa taxpayers. But what we do know is that lawmakers receive a per diem and travel expenses for each day of the special session. In this case, they were paid for one day. And this is only one aspect, as security and state troopers would also need to be compensated for their time. And as the bill comes to Reynolds' desk for a signature, a pressing issue comes forward for Iowa medical providers. Healthcare officials are now saying this strict ban could have repercussions for the state's already low number of OBGYNs. According to a report released by the State Department of Health and Human Services, there were about four and a half OBGYNs available per 10,000 women in the state. That's of 2021. Now that translates to 231 licensed OBGYNs delivering babies that year. Now for Iowa providers, this nationally recognized issue is now hitting even closer to home. Pass this law and we will lose well-qualified providers to care for our community. Take away our ability to practice full-spectrum health care and providers will choose to practice in another state and many will leave Iowa. On a national scale, a Kaiser Fund Family Foundation survey from the end of June found that a majority of OBGYNs believe the Dobbs decision in 2022 is linked to an increased maternal deaths. Now, large shares also believe it has also worsened racial and ethnic inequities in maternal health and the ability to track new OBGYNs to this field. And there were several amendments that failed to make it into this bill. Local 5's Larissa Leone joins us live from the Capitol to break down one amendment that sparked division during debate. Larissa. Yeah, Mary, there was a lot to unpack from yesterday's special session, but there was one amendment that stuck out um, to me personally. Now, this amendment would have allowed children under the age of 12 years old the right to an abortion, but it was failed and it created some division among fellow party members. Abortion, as defined within the 2023 legislation, is the termination of a human pregnancy with the intent other than to produce a live birth or to remove a dead fetus. The latest bill awaits the signature of Governor Reynolds. Once in effect, abortions would be banned once cardiac activity is detected, usually around six weeks of pregnancy. It does include exceptions. An abortion would be allowed in case of rape, incest, a medical emergency, or if there's a lethal abnormality. One of the many proposed exceptions that didn't make the cut was an amendment that would have allowed children under 12 years of age the right to an abortion. New abortion bans are likely to have pronounced impact on the youngest pregnant girls. Even in states with exemptions for rape and incest, requirements involve police reports and parental consent that are prohibited for children. The data shows that there are nearly a thousand plus of these pregnancies each year. Any child, any child under the age of 12 found pregnant would have been the victim of statutory rape. Any child, Mr. President. The exception already exists in this law. Medical expert Pio Coley explains the risk associated with pregnancy in such a young child. First of all, there is a, absolutely no data in this population. So we as physicians really don't know much about what types of risks could occur. Secondly, it could obviously impact 
the, the mother's uh, development and growth, both physically and from a psychological perspective. Coley explains how often children under 12 seek pregnancy care. We certainly don't see this a lot. And we certainly don't allow many of these types of pregnancies to go to completion because of the psychological and physiological consequences. As for the future of this legislation, Senator Whitfer says the state's highest court has ruled on procedural matters for other bills that have passed, but that the Iowa Supreme Court has never ruled on the underlying 2018 abortion bill. They have never answered this question. And so there was a 3-3 tie on the procedural motion of whether they were gonna remove the injunction. Um, obviously they didn't, and that's why we're here. And so um, I would expect it will go back through the Supreme Court and we'll get a final answer for Iowans on where the Supreme Court stands. Now this bill doesn't go into effect until Governor Reynolds puts her signature on it, and she's expected to do that on Friday. Live at the Capitol, Larissa Leone. Mary? Rosa, thank you. Meantime, since the United States Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade a little more than a year ago, there are a patchwork of laws when it comes to abortion access. We're going to take a look at an interactive map from the Guttmacher Institute. Now, it's a group dedicated to research, policy, organization, and documentation of current legislation. Now, this shows that policies that are in place as of last week. Neighboring Minnesota and Illinois both ranked as protective, while South Dakota and Missouri listed as most restrictive. And the governor is set to sign the abortion restriction bill this Friday. Local 5 is on your side as we continue to track new developments. Keep up to date through the We Are Iowa Plus. That's available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and now Apple TV.